Hey guys, Darren Kyle here, Coach of Wise Ocean Pods, and welcome back to another episode of our round review series. On today's episode, we will be reviewing round 18, where we saw some massive scores. We saw some 2500s, and we also got a bit of uh, chaos going around, bits and pieces here and there. We'll get into that a bit later. And we also saw some good rookie scores, so typical fantasy. Um, rained chaos throughout the week and continued through the round, but then blessed us with some good rookie scores to cover us through the week. So typical fantasy just there. They love to do that, playing with our emotions. So very funny round. Oh, sorry, I was already on the wrong page. Um, yeah, but that's just typical fantasy, isn't it? So they just love playing with us. Um, we'll quickly go through my team quickly first. Um, so I scored the 2,367, so 2,367. Um, so overall pretty decent, um, uh, jumped me up over a thousand spots in the overall rankings into the top 10,000 finally, it's been quite a few round, a couple, well, a few weeks, so it is nice to see four digits there, hopefully I can stay here for the remainder of the season, um, uh, quickly go through my team, plus three, negative three, uh, I've got to go plus three on Tom Stewart, and now, if you didn't watch this game, you probably would have missed a lot of this, but it was a roller coaster of a match to watch with him, or just owning him, especially bringing him in this week. The amount of the time where he just wasn't scoring, he was off the ball a hell of a lot, and he just wasn't getting any of the pill. I think he was on like nine points, majority, what, like halfway through that third, uh, first quarter, and just didn't look absolutely near it. And I thought it was a horrible trade in. I was. I was head in hands, just thinking, oh, what have I done here? But then he turned it on and started scoring really well. But then he um, had a high hit, so he hit someone high, and I thought, oh, no, here he goes. He's getting suspended for a couple of weeks and his automatic first trade out. Um, luckily, that hasn't come to fruition. Yeah, he has got off scot-free. I don't even know if they looked at it, but, yeah, I'm glad he hasn't gotten off there. And then he also had the head clash that he had where it split his eye open and I thought, here we go, now he's concussed, now he's done for the week. Surely I can't dodge all these bullets, but somehow we're in the Matrix and we're just dodging everything. So he was a great trade-in and I just have to give him the plus three for dodging all those bullets there. So really glad to have him in. Obviously scored the 113, so that was also a positive in lower time on ground. So really glad with him there. The negative three just has to go to the Frio game style, I think. I am getting absolutely pummeled with the way Frio are playing at the moment. They are, Especially because I have four of them in my team currently, um, being Clark, Ryan, Strong, and um, Young there. They're just hurting me. None of them have gone over like 105 in the last, say, five weeks or so. They've just gone to this game style where they just are not scoring at all. So I think Hayden Young's the only one that's gone 105 in the last five games. So they are absolutely killing me at the moment. They've just moved away from this, uh, you know, feasting game style. And it's, yeah, it's just really hurting me. And it's something that we probably need to talk about in terms of our trading out tar- trade out targets this week in luxury. A lot of these guys can go. I think, honestly, the safest one is a Jordan Clark at the moment, which is weird to say. You wouldn't have thought that would be the case, you know, five, six weeks ago. Um, yeah, so that's the really odd thing. So I do think a lot of these, uh, yeah, Ryan, Sarong, and Young could all be luxury traded out. As of this week, even with a good run, the Frio game style is just shot shit. And yeah, you don't want to be messing around with it too much. Um, my captain's VC and C, so I ended up putting the VC on Nick Dacos, he scored the 87, 85, I sort of just went with a matchup, thinking it was good there, we had seen some really good scores against the Cats either way, even when they did a bit of a tag, so I thought he'd be fine, they still had plenty of disposals, he had, what, 32 disposals there, just didn't get it done with the marks and the tackles, unfortunately, so didn't get the VC done. But luckily went in to the Lockie Whitfield on the Sunday against Richmond, and I probably have to put an apology out there for those guys that listen to my captains. I absolutely forgot about Lockie Whitfield the entire time. Um, I did not say his name once. I didn't even think about him when I did my research. He just went under the radar for me. And as soon as I uh, yeah realized that he was up against Richmond, I was like, oh, what have I done? He was easily going to be in my top, uh, top five there. So apologies for anyone that sort of uh, didn't go with him because he wasn't in line. So hopefully he ended up going with it and just didn't go with my captains. Anyway, so yeah, he was nice to have 132, junked up late, so really glad to have him there. He even spent a little bit more time on the bench in this game, just, I think he got caught on the bench for like nine minutes at some one point, just because the ball was on the opposite side of the ground for forever, and 
yeah, a bit frustrating there, but he, he junked up late, got 12, ta- uh, 12 marks, and yeah, he was awesome in that game. And what well, that's his fourth 120 score in the last six weeks, so he's absolutely flying at the moment and got some good matchups to come. So if you don't have him, then maybe it's time to jump on if you can. Uh, trade review. So quickly, again, my trades were Max to Nankervis and Sexton to uh, Tommy Stewart. So really happy, happy with my trades again. Um, both went one ten plus, which was very pleasing to see. Um, obviously two red dots as well that needed to go. So that was very pleasing. Um, but I don't think it would have been very hard this week to get two one ten scores at all. So. But glad I went Tom Stewart over like a McKercher. I think McKercher only went like an 85. So that worked out well. But um, we'll see how it eventuates over the remainder of the season. Um, yeah. I think I just made the split, split second decision that I, I wanted his role a bit better. I liked his run a little bit more, I think. And yeah, so I went Tom Stewart instead. So swings and roundabouts, I'm happy with him there. I um, also think he's a great target this week. So that's probably enough about my team. Um, I guess we'll just go through some of the scores here. Um, like I said, uh, Nick Ma- Nick Martin probably should have been my plus three. He scored that 143 after what has been the poor last three weeks, I would say, in easier matchups. Kicked four goals in that, and he, I think he had a massive last quarter. I think he had like a 60-something point, la- point last quarter. So he came home strong. Would have been a very unique captain option, but would have done you wonders there. Playing it just has a license to do whatever he wants, honestly. He just roams around the ground, goes back, goes forward, kicks goals, goes on the wing, just does whatever, honestly. So um, I still think he's in that top six range. He's, you know, he's still putting up 90s. He's only had one bad game with a 79, realistically. Um, I, I don't accept 90s are a bad score. I think everyone, even the best of best players have 90s. Um, so I think he's absolutely fine there. And I think he has still has a pretty good run. So I absolutely like him there. Uh, rookies uh, needs to needs to have a shout out to the rookies. They just absolutely blessed us this week. Like what what's book mine? I got 60, 80, uh, 105, which a lot of people looped on. Like myself, I took off Hayden Young for him, which at the start of that game in the first quarter looked like a terrible move because I think Hayden Young was on like nearly forty points in the first in the first quarter, and I thought he was on for a massive one, but he really slowed down in that in that game and nearly disappeared in that second half. So yeah, glad I made that decision and. Turned out to be the right one of all the midfielders that I could have gone with. Um, I guess, no, even, I guess I probably could have done it for Luke Ryan, but I, it would have been a bit tougher to sort of swing, and, swing it around because uh, Humphreys was in the full, uh, midfield there. So, interesting one there. Um, what other good rookie scores? We had a, a Billy Dowling, which I know a lot of people had on field. I think it was like 90% of the top uh, 10,000 had him there. So, big shout out to him, and his last quarter was a massive one. I think he was on like um, 37 points at three-quarter time. And yeah, jumped up to the 80 in that fourth quarter. So he had a massive one there. Also a very interesting one this week. He plays Friday night. So uh, he will be a good a good option to have a look. And maybe you can uh, flick the team around a little bit. And that can determine what you're going to do with your trades. Double straps had a 63. Pretty good there. Um, yeah, and I think generally a lot of people had um, some really good scores there as well. So... Um, even if you had a Sharpie, had a Dempsey, um, a Mana as well, also scored really well. So very good rookie, rookie scores there. Continue on with midfielders, pretty plain top four there. Bontepelli 100, Sam Walsh 88, um, Merritt 91, and Sarong 88. Really poor from the, you know, those top line uh, midfielders, honestly. But then you look at the bottom line, you had Zach Batters 133, Tom Green 123, up. Oh, yeah, and uh, Rosie 104, surprisingly, my third highest scoring in the midfield was a 105. So what this round could have been if, you know, my midfielders came along to the right and just put up those extra big scores. So still waiting for that one round, whether everything just comes together. But we'll wait and see. Uh, really happy with Toby Nankervis trading him in. Um, yeah, I was pretty bullish on him all week, and luckily he was the second highest scorer of the Ruckman that we were selected. So probably something I wanted to quickly touch on, and, and something I'm going to keep track of for the remainder of the season to see what is what actually was the best option. Um, obviously, X, who was my number one pick, was <laughs> one of the worst. Um, just by just in front of um, Tom DeConing, who. No one should have picked up with the likes of Pitnick joining in anyway. 
Um, he had that 94 uh, cherry. Um, Marshall had the 150. That's probably the one, the one that really stands out, honestly. 150 puts nearly 40 points on anyone of the other Ruckman's head. Um, but again, he has a tougher uh, tougher matchup that comes. So, um, yes, it'll be interesting to see how it develops. I don't think he'll continue that 150 range, but definitely possible. We well, you know he is a very good Ruckman. English, who was very popular, scored that 111. So pretty solid there. Grundy scored 110. Nank with saw we won one seventeen, Meek one one oh five, and even the Jackson one one eleven. So you really couldn't go too far wrong. Like you know, one of the the lowest option there was a ninety, um, but the highest option was a fifty. So a bit of a sixty point gap there, but you you can't pick them all. So I think you couldn't really go wrong with any of those. We'll just have to eventuate to see how it goes throughout the remainder of the season. And on to the forward line, pretty stinky again from the main guys. 95, 85 from Flanders and Zorko. Let us start to slow down a little bit. I don't like this Flanders midfield role. He's just not getting those marks that we're used to. Like, go back to those 13 marks that you had. You know, that 163, give us that back. I love that. Not these three marks and no tackles games that you just don't do. He's just not a tackle. I don't like him in the midfield, unfortunately. But in saying that, it was a hard matchup. Even last week was a tougher matchup. So um, it doesn't get any better, though. He's got uh, the Giants this week who are tough. Um, hopefully it opens up for him a little bit later. West Coast, an easy one. Melbourne, a Tiger. So I'll still be holding on to him there. Uh, I think he's easily probably top three in the forward line. But yeah, would like to see some higher scores. Caldwell just continues on his consistency. Probably the most informed player. Probably... Just in front of Lockie Whitfield, I'd say, on terms of average. Four scores of over 120, including 144 and 130. Um, it needs to be considered for a captain option. Even this week, he plays on the Friday night, so I actually quite like him as a VC option. I don't know if you can trust him with the C just yet, but it, yeah, I definitely think he, he's working his way up there for sure. His role is awesome, and he's just an absolute beast in there. Look at his tackles numbers, 12, 12, 11, 7. Even with those 7 tackles, he still manages to put up a 130, which is ridiculous. So, um, Gets a lot of free kicks against as well. Oh, free kicks 4, sorry. Um, what, 1, 2, 3, 4 there. And he, he only had the 5 free kicks against in the West Coast game. So imagine what that could have been. That could have been an easy 140 as well. So shout out to him. He's probably F1 for the remainder of the season. Simpkin, my boy, brought him in 2 weeks ago. Really Happy I brought him in. Now he comes up to his good run, so I think a lot of people will start to jump on him now. So glad he's gone up, you know, that extra sort of 50 to 60, sell to 70K in the last couple of weeks just to get that benefit. Um, yeah, just looks like a solid F6 option for the remainder of the season. Um, got the solid roll. That didn't change much at all through th this week. I uh, think I checked. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. He, from the eyes, he'd played a lot of midfield time. Just having a look here. Uh, dropped by 10%, not not anything too crazy, even with um the likes of, what's his name? Just Wardlaw coming in a little bit more, dropped the likes of Tom Powell and a uh, Sheasel down just a little bit further. So no concerns with his role there. He is just the captain of the side and just finds the ball. So really happy with him. And then, like I said, the rookies there went really well. So that's my team, um, slowly getting better. Putting a lot of good trades together, so which is nice to see for the remainder of the year. Finding a bit of form, so. But let's move on to the games. I think. Um, we'll just, again just go through all the games, talk about the highlighted players, and then we'll get into some you know trade in, trade out targets for this week. Um, not won't go too in depth this week. Uh, this this video will go that into that in the uh, trade video later on in the week. So. Starting off with the Friday night game where we saw Geelong beat the Pies. So we saw Darcy Cameron go 147. And it's something that we need to target for the remainder of the season if this is the lineup that the Geelong are going to run with having Blitzarves and De Koning be the main two Ruckman. Because look what he did. He put up 58 hitouts, which is ridiculous. I can't remember the last time I saw a hitout that, of that calibre. So... Um, we need to heavily look at to see who got who's got that matchup and pro possibly even consider um, that as a captain option for the remainder of the season. So 
it, they sort of split it 50-50 in terms of Blitzards had 43 co- rock contest and uh, Sam DeConing had 43 rock contest with Neil there as nine as well. So not really too much to really consider. I'd say Sam DeConing, if he is fit, would go back to being that main uh, rock contest, which was probably wasn't as friendly, but um, definitely something we need to monitor for a little while. I actually think um, the likes of... I think it's Tim English that has him this week, if I remember correctly. Yep, Tim English has them, so he will probably be a big consideration for um, a captain option this week, if nothing changes. So just keep that in mind there. I don't know why this went backwards, but we'll go back into it. Nope. Sorry, guys. All right. Fall on there. No one really to mention here in terms of fantasy relevance, unless you're looking at a side bottom. I'm personally not. The goalie, I don't think so. Um, Nick Dacos is the next one, 85. We spoke about him a little bit. Copped attention from an Atkins. It wasn't a super hard tag, just sort of ran with him. Didn't let him get that, you know, cheap ball and let him be damaging with it. I think he was more that in and under player, which why he got 32 disposals. He just wasn't able to do much else. So no concern there for me. Um, just probably something to keep in mind that he is going to cop a lot of attention um in his career so with something that we just need to monitor so keep in mind what his tag runs are coming up looking at it here he's got hawks next week tigers a week after then he goes on a run of carlton swans lions where he may cop a bit of attention so probably four games there he could cop attention even not if not even five so um is it crazy to say that you probably, if you're in the most luxurious position, you could jump off him? Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not in that position, but um, if you're really up there and you've you've got a perfect team and you've already got jumped off the likes of Ryan Young and Sarong and you've got all your other shit guys off, you can probably jump off him as well. Besides that, you've got Crips as well. That needs to be jumped off. His role has diminished a little bit. I think he dropped in um, CBAs again this week down to that 50%, which is what we sort of saw towards the start of the season where he was putting up these 70s. So I am highly concerned. Um, I think he got a bit lucky last week with him kicking three goals in three minutes, and that bumped up his score by, you know, 30-odd points to get you that 110. Um, yeah, this is back to reality for Jack Cripps. So jump off while you can, I'd say. Back to only 15 disposals, which is ridiculous. Even kick a goal in that. So major alert signs there for me. Besides that, don't really need to talk about any rookies. Um, I probably could put Ned Long on the list in terms of a watch. He played a bit more CBAs, but I don't think that will continue. Um, besides that, all the rookies pretty much failed us in that game. So we'll move on to the... Geelong, where we saw Graham Myers pop up back into form after that stinky one last week and put up the 116 for the highest score for them. Um, was a bit of a target this, last week, but um, I think, you know, it's always a tough one, isn't it? You've got Dylan Moore, who was in form. He scored back-to-back sort of 120s. He put up a bad score this week, back to the 60s. So it's just really tough for these, uh, you know, F6 sort of spots. They're just never consistent there. One week they throw up a 60, one week they throw up a 110. So it's just really trying to get your your seventh um, forward primo and trying to loop the best you can because, yeah, if as long as you can nail it, like I said last week, if you can nail the timing of getting, you know, these big scores at one tens and um, avoiding those sixties, that's fifty points. That's massive. If even if it's twenty points, that's still massive in terms of a individual um, position. So, if you can do that as best you can, but I still think Grand Myers is a great option. It is a bit more risky, but I think the way um, the cats are playing right now and looking at their run home, I believe, if I go back to that. Um, inside mids. I know he's not an inside mid, but I just want to look at the names of who they're playing. Um, Western Bulldogs, a little, little bit a bit tougher, but I think they should win that game pretty comfortably, especially because it's at uh, GMHBA. North should kick plenty of goals in that game, so it should be fine. Even Adelaide should kick quite a few goals, so happy with that. Um, Frio, even St Kilda should be great, and West Coast. So I think that he should actually be quite decent for the remainder of the season, even though it doesn't look great in terms of the scale. I think he can kick quite a few big, high number goals in the remainder of the season. Um, just playing, you know, what's that? Four of the bottom four? 
sorry, no, he plays he plays four of the bottom five, being Crows fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth. Only rich, only missing out on Richmond. So it's probably even a question that maybe you can look in at, at a Jezza Cameron um, as a forward option at his price. I think it's at seven hundred k. I think. Um, I, th- I still think it's a bit early, but if you're really um, bullish, oh, how do you get Cameron? What's his name? Why can't I find him? Yeah, Jeremy Cameron, not Jezza. <laughs> what am I thinking? Um, 700k, like I said, should kick a few bags in the coming weeks, I would have thought. If you look back at his last matchups, scored 10- 122 against um, North, scored 116 against the Bulldogs last time, 62 against uh, the Lux of Crows, which is pretty stinky, 91 against St Kilda, who else did he have? Western Bull, uh, he had the, the Eagles, haven't played this so far this year, so can't really go off that one, and I think he had one more, I think. Who else did he have? Where is it gone? Uh, Frio is the other one as well. Where did, where did he score against Frio? Again, hasn't played them this as far this season. So, tough to tell, but I think he could go pretty big this uh, end of the year. So, if if you're really interested, I don't mind that as a play. Um, He is fairly cheap. So, I do think we do have some better options, though. Um, Especially if you don't know him, he's cheaper. Oh, he's actually the exact same price. Better roll, more consistent, I reckon. Better run, I would say, so... Something to consider there. Um, Holmes, again, back to form, 114. Found a lot of the pill in the back half of this game. Um, these guys are a really good matchup for defenders, so good to see him bounce back after a poor one last week. Been a, a, a great pick all season, so luck in there. Tom Short, my boy, 26 disposal, 9 marks and 4 tackles. Like I said, just a roller coaster owning him at this point in time. Just either hard nut and uh, could get suspended at any time, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, his form has been elite over the last three. Um, I still, I still highly recommend if you're looking for a defender. Um, you can't go far and go wrong with the likes of Tom Stewart there. Um, the rookie um, Humphreys, Lawson Humphreys. 105, he has just been a shining light in this back half of the season. and 13 marks is ridiculous for this halfback. So I'm loving what he's doing. I can't see him getting dropped. Um, I just would have loved to, to see it earlier on in the season. I don't know why they held him back so long. Um, yeah, because it's making a real tough call about like having sit him, having him sit on the bench for the majority of the season now. And, you know, only being able to take his score once. But definitely could be someone we could loop throughout the remainder of the season if he can continue these scores. Has a nice role. Um, yeah, and just looks awesome back there. Dempsey is another one I probably should have highlighted as well. 94. He's just been a solid F6 option. And since a lot of us traded him out, I think he's nearly put up, like, um, what, it's five tons since we all traded him out. I think I traded him out back in, uh, what was it, maybe around eight. Has had a few not forties in there, but and fifties, but had one o one o four, one o four, one o seven, and a ninety four now. So been a solid, especially in the last four. Hasn't gone below seventy three. So um, if you have him, I guess you just hold him until he starts to really hurt you. I guess so. That's what I'll be doing. And finally, a lot of people traded in the likes of Mana, who only put up the seventy, but while it looks like he's far down, a seventy is still a really good score for them. So I don't know what happened in this game where John Long just absolutely waxed and they took, you know, a lot of marks. Like a lot of them had, you know, eight or nine marks. Some, a couple of them hit double digits. So four of them went one t- uh, 10 plus. So I, I think it was just the Collingwood matchup just did not really care about uh, putting pressure on. They just let him mark all day. So something that maybe we could uh, a target in the future weeks. But we'll move on from this game, I think. Moving on to my boys, Hawthorne versus Freeman. Well, my boys got up over there in Tassie, which is really nice to see on the push for finals. I don't think we'll get there, but um, it's exciting to see nonetheless. In terms of fantasy, not really too much relevance. Um, Lord Meek was maybe the only relevant one in terms of 105, so really nice to see him in a good matchup there. 51 hit-outs, which was really pleasing. 15 disposals, 3 marks, and 4 tackles. 
uh, yeah, was a really good, uh, unique option if you you picked him up. Still has a really good run, so hopefully he can continue to push up these, you know, 100 to 110 scores and, you know, be consistent and would have allowed you to do a big an upgrade on the other side. Unfortunately, the, the other, bigger upgrade last week to a Dylan Moore probably didn't work out in your favour because he only had the 73, unfortunately. Had 18 disposal, 3 marks, 3 tackles, and kicked a nice goal early, but really went unsighted for the remainder of that uh, game, realistically. Um, don't really know why. I think he just sort of got um, a bit more attention, like I said. Um, with Ginevan out, he sort of became the most dangerous forward, so they put their best defender on him. So, um, yeah, doesn't allow him to have as much free space as you would like him to have. Besides that, all day, I think he's an absolute trade out now. He needs to go 83. I think it's back to back to back 80s or set through the 70s. So he needs to go. And I think that's about it for these guys. We'll move on to Fremantle, where they're a bit more fantasy relevant. We saw um, Luke Jackson, the top score for the game, went 111. So, really low scoring game for what we would have expected being Pig Park. They usually have some massive scores if you look back. In history, there's usually some massive scores. So I think it just goes to show you how much pressure was in this game. There was no one really allowed um, either team to sort of just chip it around and take the pressure off. They really pushed up hard and, yeah, it really didn't allow for good fantasy scoring, unfortunately. But um, Luke Jackson was a pretty decent pick in terms of just a one-week play. Um, may push to two, depending on if Darcy's out this week, but we'll wait and see on that one. Um, to get a 111 from the innocent trade in at that cheaper price, you're happy with that. Um, Jordan Clark continued his strong form with 104. Um, would like to see a few more ceiling scores, but he just looks safe as houses in terms of his scoring output. He is clearly that uh, main distributor there. Would like to see a few more um, disposals. They really just didn't get many, many hands on the ball. Like, the highest disposal count for their team was uh, 23, and even on Hawthorns, it was 24. So. There was really no no massive scores of you know thirty plus even not push pushing into the forties so um, I'm sure that will come, that will come throughout the remainder of the season but just currently with their game style in this particular game they just didn't so no concern for me over there with um, Clark Sarong is probably my next concern eighty eight I think that's five in a row now he has not hit a ton he is just yeah losing it at the moment. I don't know what's going on. It's ever since I traded him in, honestly. Um, has not hit a ton. And, yeah, it has been shocking. Like, 88, not good enough for an easy team. Just no marks. Like, he used to be so thirsty for getting the, getting back and taking those marks. But, yeah, just not doing it anymore, which is unfortunate. Anyone that still has Jeremy Sharp went 87. Um, pretty impressive there. Back to Sarong, just for a second. Um, I think I already touched on it a little bit, but I... I think if you're in a really luxurious position, I don't mind trading him. Um, the only flag I do have is their nice run to come up, which I, I have mentioned a numerous amount of times already um, in previous pods. So um, it goes Melbourne, West Coast, Essendon, and Geelong, who um, three of the four of them are really good matchups. So Melbourne being a light green, um, West Coast and Geelong being a bright green, and Essendon being a neutral team. So really good matchups and should put up some decent scores. But we have seen in the past, even against Richmond, did not get the same, um, didn't get the points, but was tagged in that game. So maybe that's something to counter in. But even against, you know, the likes of Bulldogs and um, Gold Coast, who Gold Coast are a nicer matchup, but um, yeah, didn't score well in that game either, unfortunately. So something to consider. That's always the difficulty at this time of year when you are doing luxury trades. You can trade out a guy that, you know, while he's in bad form, he may have a good matchup and he could absolutely put up a massive ceiling score on your head. I personally wouldn't be doing it with that run. Uh, I think I, I prioritize the run too much in terms of the way I play fantasy. It hasn't really came off this year um, in terms of um, the matchups really haven't influenced too many big scores. It's just been purely on form and um, game style. So... Maybe that's something you can just you follow the pattern a little bit, um, but yeah, I, I I tend to embrace the run more than I do about form. So something a bit about me, Andy Brayshaw. I did recommend people trading him in this week because he did have strong history against the uh, Hawthorne there, but put up an eighty four, so that's disappointing. 
23 disposals, 3 marks, 6, six tackles. Um, I still like him as an option, like still as a cheaper option there um, going into this run. So it's something to consider. I don't think he gets much attention. So he's sort of that Dunkley to that Neil sort of guy. I think Sarong pretty much takes all the, the heat. So I think he should have some pretty big games for the next four weeks. So keep that in mind. Hayden Young is probably another one that I'd be looking at trading out. His his role is still playing a lot more forward than what I would want to see, unfortunately. Um, playing sort of 50%, 60% in the CBAs, but yeah, playing a little bit too more forward than I would, what I would like. I'd like him back, you know, 70% CBAs to really be pushing these numbers. But again, nice run, so... Um, would be a bit braver to move off of him, but I don't think it'll hurt you too badly. He really hasn't put up any really big ceiling scores, even if we look at that right now. Um, it's been a long time since he's hit a big score, which was 125 against the Tigers earlier on in the year. Besides that, it was a 129 against the Crows back in round three. So I don't think he's going to hurt you that badly. Um, if you do, that's just really unlucky. Um, yeah, I think he'll just continue to put up, you know, these... You know, 90 to a 110 scores for the remainder of the season and not be too much of a pick. Probably just outside of the top six for, for now. So I don't mind trading him out there. Same with Luke Ryan. Um, he just does not want the pill anymore. He does not want it in his hands. The the body language from him, he's I think he's pretty much out of that. Honestly, I think the comments from the coach about the... Uh, you know, don't get disposals, was directly pointing at him and he's just taking that personally and now he's just, no, I don't want the ball at all. Don't give it to me. He's pointing it to go elsewhere when they're looking to switch where it used to always go through him and, it, you know, it used to go back three or four times where now it's just, no, nah, just go straight over him. And it's unfortunate because, yeah, a lot of people paid up over a million for him when he was going, you know, that one, I think he went back to back to back, one sort of 40s. Yeah, 126, 142, and 144, and people paid for him at a million dollars, and yeah, really unfortunate he has only hit the ton once, and it was a 101, so this is probably his last week for me, I think, um, I'll give him one more week against Melbourne, because he did have that massive score against them last time, that 142, but again, I'm not expecting 18 marks, it's just not the game style at the moment, so hoping he can push you just, you know, straight bat at one, just 100, just three Three digits would be nice. And then he comes into a tougher matchup, I believe, for designated kickouts. Uh, if I can look at that. And then maybe I can look to luxury trade him out there. Uh, Fremantle. Uh, West Coast, uh, yeah, no, neutral matchup. And then Essendon, Geelong, tougher matchups. So maybe someone I would look to jump off. Just not maybe not purely on the matchups. More like just uh, due to the, the role in the game style that Freo are playing, just not being inducive to scoring. So looking to jump off some of these Freo guys. Yeah, come back to Bart, maybe you have to do any of them, unfortunately. Um, but I think that sort of does it for this game. We'll move on to the Sydney North game, where we saw Sydney absolutely thrash North. So we saw Golden, the highest scorer of the round, went 151. Back into form, 41 disposals, 8 marks, 3 tackles, and just disrespected him a little bit. Should have been in my captains, um, but just based on his form, where he hadn't hit a ton in the last two weeks, just didn't think I could justify it. Um, North are also quite a hard matchup in terms of, they don't concede that many ceiling scores, but Gordon's just a different beast, he works hard, and yeah, they just had no answer for him, especially with Ohini in here. I thought he maybe copped a bit of attention, but... Uh, North ended up uh, trading Philip, uh, not trading, um, omitting Philip, so they didn't really have much of a tag option for Golden in this game. So that really worked out well for him, and uh, congrats to all those that did put the VC on, and that worked out in your favour massively. Warner, again, went, scored two goals, three, and put up a one, uh, 116. Just a super coach player, in my opinion. Um, not a huge fan of him in fantasy. Don't rely on these guys that are kicking, you know, bags to score nice goals, uh, to kick nice scores. Grundy put up a nice 110 if you went for him as a bit of a unique option. I don't think too many people went him. Um, besides that, really, no one else to really consider, I wouldn't have thought. I didn't really see James Jordan go to Sheasel as I sort of expected, so that, that was a bit weird. But nevertheless, uh, uh, Sheasel didn't score very well anyways, so... 
Um, but I guess the main topic we need to speak about and look at is um, the, the inclusion of Mills and uh, Parker into the side. So Parker came in as a late in. Um, I think someone went out as a laid out. I can't remember who exactly it was, but he came on as a sub. And yeah, looking at this mid this CBA time, it's really confusing. Like Luke Parker, while he only played what it was, where are you? Where are you? Thirty eight percent time on ground. He had thirty percent CBA. So what does that say for what his role is going to be? Does that mean he's going to get a lot more CBAs? Um, possibly. Looks like Adams has taken a bit of a hit, even though there wasn't much to hit of a hit to take. Um, Papley sort of say the same. Mac uh, McLean as a back rock Rockman stay the same. Justin, um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably won't stay. That he'll go back to being in that wing role. So I won't. I'll say that job's down to zero. So I don't think there's too much concern in terms of Heaney coming back. I say he sort of slots back into that um, fifty to sixty, if not seventy, sort of range in the CBA. So I think he should be fine for the main of the season, especially being a forward. I don't think you're trading him out if you still have him. If you held him throughout the week, so that's just how I, I see it there. Um, looking at the game, I didn't see any concerns. Mills played mostly back. Um, yeah, he didn't have any CBA, so no concerns from Mills. It was mainly just Parker being back, um, building a bit of fitness as well. So interesting to see a full game for those guys, but yeah, no, no concern for me there. Moving on to North, uh, LDU top scored for them with 106. Again, not looking at him, I don't think. Even with the nice matchup, I just don't... I don't, I don't think he's an option. Um, honestly, I've kind of written him off, but um, what's his form been like? 106, 108 in the last two. Then 67 is stinky, very stinky. Um, but the 94 just hasn't seen much of a ceiling, so I don't think it's much of a play, unfortunately. I, don't, I think it's just a, a very meh pick. I probably wouldn't be doing it. Uh Terry was a disappointment of the week. Obviously, we spoke about it a bit, bit about four. Obviously, a lot of people would have traded him in if not had him already. Was a tougher matchup against Grundy, as I flagged. Um, Grundy is a very tough matchup in terms of rucks, so um, I expect him to, to turn it around pretty big this week. I think he... Who does he have? I think he's an easy matchup this week. Um, North has a really good run, so... Um, has Carlton this week, so that is Tom the Croning and Pitnet. Hopefully, Pitnet is omitted and it will be a bit of an easier matchup. Um, we saw obviously Tom Eng Tim English go 111 against them last week, so should be fine either way. And he should be good for the remainder of the season and has a pretty good run. Only has West Coast, who are a tough matchup, depending on who they have in as a Ruckman. So, one of those that are really um, team, team dependent, but yeah, really like him there. Um, Akocha put up an 89, so sat on the bench really long in that last quarter. I think it was like 16 minutes or so. Um, so really unusual. I think I guess that was sort of just a flag with him, um, just being managed a little bit for the uh, while he is still overcoming that foot injury, well that foot stress. So that was always a bit of a flag with him. I think it'd be fine, um, but yeah, he still put up a 90, nice uh, 89 for you. So that could have been a 110 plus easily. So. Really promising from him. Still a great target if you don't have him already. A Simkin, my boy. Um, I still think he's a great target, as I've shown with their great run to come for inside mids. I think it's the best for the game. But like looking at this number, 2.8 um, for the remainder of the season. I'm particularly looking at these last, these next four games, Carlton, Geelong, Richmond, and uh, West Coast. Really like those ones. Even after that, you probably just look at trading him out and jumping on, say, another guy. Because it comes up against uh, Western Bulldogs and Hawthorne. So I jump off there. The only other good run while I'm here, St. Kilda. Really, really nice run as well. So I really like the likes of Steel and even a Philippu. Um, as a cheaper guy, I think I'm going to risk it this week. Um, I wasn't going to speak about it here, but we can talk about him now. I really like him. I really like the role change. He's got the numbers in the in the uh, the twos to back it up. Would like to see his time on ground just bump up that a little bit more just to... Um, be confident with it, but he's getting 20 plus disposals, lots of tackles, kicking, going forward and kicking goals as well. So, yeah, I, I really like it as that um, F6, if not F7 option that you can loop on. Um, yeah, it should be great. Great matchup to go into this week as well, so it should reward you handsomely. So, I really like it. 
I think it's enough said. I, I'd say it'd be highly spoken about this week as an option. So you don't need to hear it from me. Um, Sheasel put up a very low 78, so didn't cop much of attention. Still had the highest ceiling um, disposals for this game, 29 disposals. Just really didn't get much amongst it in terms of tackles or marks, really. Had four marks, which isn't too bad, but... It was just a tough matchup, that's all. I don't think it was too much of a concern. Um, again, does come up against a couple tags, I did, as I did flag a couple weeks back. Um, has Colton this week, so may may cop a chin cotter tag. Uh, I think that's pretty much guaranteed, unless that they go to a, uh, a Davies Uniac, which I don't see why you would. But who knows, They've been do- tags have been doing some weird things. And then he comes up against the Cats, who may cop an Atkins or a... Um, wouldn't wouldn't say a Blitzarves would go with him, but yeah, they have a few tags in there that probably goes with him. So, again, if your team's absolutely perfect, then maybe you could look to trade him out and be a bit different in that role. Um, I don't think it's going to hurt you too crazily. We we'll move on to the next game. Get through some of these games, like I always do. Take a long, long time. Been forty minutes already. Got a lot of games to get through. All right. Quickly, the Western Bulldogs, Tim English went really well with the 111. I think a lot of people would be pretty happy they traded him in. Bontempelli went with a nice 100, nothing special, but did cop a lot of attention from Chin Cotter in this game in the first half, and yeah, released a tag after that because they were losing. So they thought, let him go and try and influence some other way. So he was able to get to a flat 100 again. Just need a big score from him. Hopefully this week is the week against the Cats. He went 149 against them this last time, like this year. Oh, so, sorry, early this year. So, uh, yeah, big one to watch in terms of captain options. Um, I do expect him to get a bit of attention, though, from a bit of So, again, something to be mindful of. Uh, again, the, the, major concern, the major news in this game, which, which I was alluding to earlier, was that Matt Kennedy was the uh, sub. For, for the Blues, and I hope no one jumped on him. Um, this is exactly why I say no to him. He is their miss, Mr. Fix-It. They love to manage him. I said he was going to be the sub, and he was. So, um, yeah, it was nice to get a bit of uh, <laughs> feedback on that. That, yeah, called it a little bit there. So, happy I got that one right. Was never looking at him for me. Um, and the other one was that Chalor was a late, late out. I think it was like maybe five or six minutes before the bounce and he was withdrawn from the game with a bit of a ankle injury, I believe it was. So got a bit of a watch there in terms of the injury report if he's good to go this week. I think he will be good to go because it was close. But um, again, they probably will have to assess over the week and find out. So, But would have hurt those teams that have had him for a while if not traded him in and maybe copped that. Didn't really... Uh, Receive the news early enough because yeah, it was super late. So, a bit unfortunate there, but that's fantasy. There's always one every time it like this. There's always one very late out of throughout the year. We've had it a lot twice last year with LDU, um, where he was out, you know, minutes before the bounce, and you had to be very quick to jump off him. I was lucky, one of those lucky ones that I was contest contending last year. So my all my time sort of went into fantasy, but uh, this year I can understand why people would have missed out. Uh, on to go Colton. Uh, we saw Cripps again, one twenty-seven. He just carried their side. He just said, "It's my two hundred. I want to get us over the line." And he just put put everyone on his back once again, and couldn't get it done, unfortunately. But he had a nice one twenty-seven. So kudos to him. It's been a great pick, honestly, all year. Probably just haven't seen huge ceiling from him to be a, a mega pick. Newman started off really strong. I think he had like a 50-point first quarter, but just really slowed up in that game. 97, not too bad there. Tom DeConing, if you did trade him in, put up a 90 even with Pitnet in, so probably a bit lucky there. I thought that was going to be a 70, but yeah, 90 isn't too bad. Hopefully a Pitnet is out and DeConing can continue on his merry way, but we'll have to wait and see. And Sammy Walsh put up an 88, which is really disappointing. 27 disposals, one mark, and six tackles. So didn't cop any attention in this game. So really unusual why he only scored an 88. I think it was. I think he just had a really poor last quarter and didn't really score much. So hopefully he can uh, bounce back into form a little bit for the remainder of the season. So yeah, that's all I really got for that game. We'll move on to the next one. What's the load? 
Come on. All right, we had the the Crows beat St Kilda at Adelaide Oval. We saw Laird go 133. He's quietly finding a bit of form um, and could be a bit of a cheeky uh, trading option. Pure mid, though, um, 133. Hasn't dropped below 90 since round 10. So um, really found that, I think, since, that's pretty much since his role change has been back into the CBA. So, um, yeah, I, really, I don't mind him as a trading option. Can hit a ceiling, but yeah, just needs to find a bit more consistency. Time, time on ground is what's concerning. Um, would like to be back at that ninety percent, if not high, low to mid eighties. But yeah, seventy five is not the way I want it. So, um, yeah, I do like it as well because he shouldn't be tagged. Yeah, it should go to Dawson all the time as well. So he's sort of safe in that sense. Why is nothing working? Come on, show me the CBAs. There we go. All right. So Dawson was a number CBA taker for them this week, and Laird was number two with rank. Sorry, not ranking. Um, Barry as number three. So, a bit of an odd mixture there. Sligo sort of been dropped out there, out of flavour. So interesting to see. Looking at their run, um, it's not the greatest. I'll say that. Essendon this week, Hawthorne tough matchup next week. Does have a nice one in Geelong, but then finishes off with three tougher ones for the remainder of the season. So. Probably one that I personally wouldn't jump into. Even a Dawson I wouldn't jump into, even though they both are relatively cheap. It's just something that, again, I heavily prioritise. So, um, But if you're if you're bullish and you like him, I don't see why you couldn't. They probably won't cop too much attention in these games. So they've got, only got the Cats, who should possibly a, a tag, and the Swans. That's it. About it. I think the rest of the games are pretty fine. So, yeah, I don't mind them there, but not my favourite. Um, Dawson bounced back with a 114 with no tag there, so it was good to see him back in some form. And besides that, it was really just dowling with an 80. Really good for those that had him on field. Um, nothing else really to report for them at all. Um, maybe Sam Berry in future, if he can hold this roll down an 83, break even low. So, something you could consider. Besides that, Zach Taylor is a pretty good, decent, um, Rookie option you can trade in this week. I think he's down at 216k, low break even now. So um, should get continue to get some uh, games for the remainder of the season. So jump on if you can. Moving on to Saints, we saw Marshall go 150, and I think he was the second highest score of the round. So just went ballistic in this game. And what was a nicer matchup, but I wasn't wasn't thinking a 150 matchup. Both Ruckman just went absolutely crazy. Um, 51 hitouts to O'Brien and 48 to uh, Marshall showed that it was just a very hitout sort of friendly game, but a lot of stoppages. Um, yeah, I think it was fairly wet, so it just was very sloppy. Lots of tackles and just was able to get the ball in their hands and just put it on the boot a lot. So um, was a really nice matchup for him. And yeah, rewarded those that had traded him in and just kept it pretty simple and just going to the next best Ruckman. So. Be interesting to see how that eventuates throughout the season. I would still really like Ron Marshall, but again, tougher matchup as I've shown. Uh, Wangan Miller and Jack Steele put up tons for their team with 105 and 106, so pretty decent there. Jack Steele, I still like as an option in terms of trading. I do, like I said, like like his run. Um, it is the best in the game for the for inside mid, so only coming up against the Brisbane, who are a tough matchup for the remainder of the season. So. I don't mind him there, especially at a cheaper price of 840k um, against uh, the West Coast Eagles this week could even be a nice boost score. So if you've got the availability to jump on him and you're maybe even looking at jumping off a likes of a young or you're jumping off a, a sarong, you're not paying too much more to really get to them guys. That's 50k from a young, so yeah. Even from Orion, you're making a downgrade, so I don't mind him there. Uh, Philippu, again, I still really like him as an option. Low break even, great roll. Yeah, what's what's not there to like? His low price is a good risk option um, in that forward line, especially if you got him as F7 and you can just loop him on, then absolutely love it. He should be good for a little while longer, especially with the matchup. It's just, yeah. Ticking all the boxes for me at the moment. Good roll, um, showing the scoring potential in form, and um, good run as well. So three three big ticks for me and should be coming into my side this week. 
Besides that, we saw Sinclair go 76, so really disappointing from him. And yeah, again, um, one I'd be looking to trade out if you can. I don't think he is top six, and I don't think he's going to continuously get those big scores for you there. I'll just with a tougher run um, for defenders. I think he played a bit more midfield in this game, but um, nothing too major. Besides that, uh, Sean Maker put up a decent 60 there if you were fielding him. I think that's pretty much about it. Uh, just a big shout out to Riley Bonner who finally copped to the vest in this game after a lot of people called it early on in the season. Only only, only took, uh, what, 18 rounds? But he got there eventually. Moving on to Melbourne and Essendon. We saw Essend uh, Melbourne have a bit of an upset in this game, winning over there in Melbourne. So... We saw Trent Rivers with a one big 126. Uh, I really like him as an option as well. If I had to toss up between Tom Stewart and uh, Rivers, and it's very tight. I think they're both 1K difference from each other. They're both showing a fairly good ceiling, both going, what, what, 125, I think, in the last two weeks. So definitely both are good options. I think I like Tom Stewart's run a little bit better than uh, Trent Rivers, and I think the, the role's probably a bit more there to stay than a Rivers, so maybe that's probably the decision I'd make, just go with a bigger name rather than a, a Trent Rivers, but you probably could go on the flip side of that, you could also go Trent Rivers, who's not, not probably not going to cop much of tension because it has Oliver in front of him, whereas at the the Cats, who who's, who are they going to tag first? There's probably not going to tag a danger fielder anymore, uh, so maybe Tom Stewart is still that highly taggable option. Um, yeah, so... I don't mind him there. I'd probably split the he splitting hairs, honestly. Um, it's hard to make a decision, but I think you'll make the right one. Uh, Oliver, back up his score with a 99. I still think he's a priority trader. I don't think you're trusting him, even though he's been okay the last two weeks. He could just drop a very low one anytime, especially with a tougher run. So, yeah, one to watch there. Besides that, we saw Neil Bullen go to the likes of Zach Merritt, so shut him down a little bit with that 91. So disappointing, especially if you went with the, there with the C. Um, yeah, was a pretty nice uh, captain option, not thinking that he would get tagged, but then Neil Bullen just comes out of nowhere and something that we need to keep monitoring again. Uh, besides that, Salem put up a low score and a foul shot put up a 63, so not too bad there. Moving on to Essendon, and we well, already spoke about these two, but Nick Martin and Caldwell, absolutely killing it in this game. Nick Martin with the four goals, 143, and a Caldwell, 120. Like I said, um, Caldwell need to put some respect on his name and start considering him as a VC option, I think. Um, I really like him as a VC option this weekend against the Crows in, on the Friday night, so... Um, especially because we've got the likes of uh, Barnett who plays, I think, the third game. So we need to start using our VC pretty early on in this week. So I think he'll be a pretty high target for VC this week. So, But we'll, we'll review that in the trading video. Um, I think that's all it from the likes First of... Oops. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what the hell that was, my phone. Um, again... Ridley put up a nice 111, and also Shields put up a nice 102. So, again, a really cheap guy that you could look at. Um, he's gone back-to-back -back 100s, 114 and 102. Low time on ground, so that's only going to increase you to think. What was his uh, CBA usage, I guess? Uh, where is it? Um... Jumping up a little bit, back up to 68, 70% issue. So, looks like he's going to be sort of that uh, third midfielder for them, just behind the likes of um, Merritt and Caldwell. So, yeah, uh, I, really, I, I don't mind him as an option there, especially because he's so cheap. But um, I think this time of year, we're mainly going to the top guys. So, maybe someone we should consider for next year, um, being just how cheap he should be. Hopefully... What is he going to play? Two, four, six to eight. So we only get like a, what, that's a 6% decrease? No, he's played one more game. Ah, oh, he's only going to get a 3% decrease. But we'll have a bit of a lower percentage. So it's one to maybe put in the book for next year if he continue his form like this. Hopefully he can keep his average a little bit lower for us to have a cheaper option next year. So just one put in the sneaky one. He's definitely on my list there. We'll move on to the games. I've got three more to go through, and I've already taken up enough of your time. 
All right, we saw the Suns beat Port again. Haven't lost at home, so really, really bizarre matchup there. Uh, really, we're only looking at Flanders here. Scored the 95, like I said. Not really happy with his role, but getting it done in the midfield enough to be uh, a hold in the forward line, so nothing to worry about there. Zach Butters, uh, 133. I think, uh, free, uh, what's it called? Port's game style has been really inducive to their scoring recently. Like, looking at the 12 marks for inside mid. I'm surprised it's not Rosie, honestly, getting these marks. Because that's what it was in the start of the season, where Rosie was getting all the marks. But, yeah, Rosie's doing enough to be considered in there. And I still think he's a great target. Um, if you don't have either of these boys, both of them come up against Richmond this week. So, one of them should at least go great. Um, it'll be interesting to see who gets the tag from Graham. I think it's pretty much guaranteed to go to Butters, but um, something to war uh, to uh, consider there. Um, Houston back bounced back with a 122 after probably people traded him out. Just fantasy. That's just his game. Just don't look at it. Just he'll drop a 40 back in a couple of weeks anyway. So uh, don't worry about that one. And just shout out to Logan Evans, put up an 80. He has just been awesome in that back line. And yeah, would have loved to see it earlier, like I said. But yeah, what can you do? He's providing plenty of cash generation for the back end of the season. All right, on to Richmond and GWS, where we saw Richmond put up a decent fight, but GWS got the chockies there. We saw Nankervis top score for Richmond with a 117. Yeah, I. I just love him as a as a good option. He put twenty two disposals, four marks, four tackles, thirty six hitouts. Could have kicked the goal, and I swear they missed a um behind as well. But maybe they counted it as a rush behind. It was a bit of a close call. So, uh, either way, great trade in, and I think he's going to be good for the end of the season with his good uh run. Just the captain of the side, so they don't mind giving him the ball either. Besides that, we saw Timmy Taranto go out with a concussion. So. Uh, pretty poor if you traded him in. Would have been tough because he is so lowly owned as well. So I guess that's no, just one of the flags that if you are going to go unique, it can really hurt you, especially if they get injured or they get injured in the game. So now it's a forced trade that you have that no one else has. So it can hurt your season for sure. So, But definitely could have paid off for you. He was in some ripping form. Besides that, really no one else to really look at here. Just, again, keep an eye on Graham. For the remainder of the season, he looks like he's going to be set for some tagging roles. Um, I swear there was another tagger as well. Like a... Um, who was it? Who was it? No, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I thought there was also a tagger that sort of... Um, yeah, kept an eye on someone, but maybe not. Uh, weirdly, um, the... the Tag went to Cogs. Like, why the hell did it go Cogs of a people? Like, why why would it not go to a Whitfield or a Green? They were just absolutely killing you. Why would it go to a Cogs? That was just a really weird decision from the Tigers uh, coach there. So I wouldn't have made that same call, but whatever. Besides that, we saw Briggs score a massive 140. So um, maybe that says that Nank isn't the toughest matchup in terms of mid... Uh, default. <sighs> Ruckman, sorry. Getting long, late now, so... Starting to stumble a little bit, but yeah. Um, he was also a really good option, but I don't think it will work out in the long run. Whitfield, my captain, 132. Really good, and I think a lot of people had him as captain, so he went really nice there. And again, we've got to target this matchup for defenders. Uh, Tom Green would have been a nice captain option as well. Was in my top five, so good to have him there. And finding a bit of form, so hoping he can, you know, absolutely kill it for the remainder of the season. Besides that, we saw a Bedford go to a Taranto in the tag in the situation. So, yeah. But that was sort of do it for this game. We'll go on to the final game and then we'll finish off with just sort of what I'm doing. We'll talk, we'll talk about some trade targets, obviously. Uh, we saw <clears throat> a close game in the end. Um, Brisbane Lions only just won by, what, 13 points over there in the West. So, really, um, what hurt the most was that Liam Duggan got concussed uh, i think it was a, i think it was a concussion but maybe it was an ankle issue um subbed out on 23 so that would have hurt for those that did trade him in a couple weeks ago yeah really unfortunate again really lone boat to be on you and now i've got a forced trade and yeah no one else really does 
We saw Lockie Neal continue his strong form, and he has just absolutely been killing it, honestly. Has just been a shining light for, what, uh, maybe the last, say, oh, I don't even know, 10 rounds? Hard to say. Dropped a, a stinky 150, uh, 50 in there with a heavy tag, but pretty much besides that, has only gone below 100 once. So he has been a very good pick if you picked him up. I do expect that to start to come to an end now. So it's something I still wouldn't be jumping on. Um, even though he has been in great form. I do not recommend him. Uh, Josh Dunkley put up a decent 106. Should have been bigger. But yeah, just sort of didn't try too hard in this game. Um, yeah, just let Lockie Neal do what he needed to. So disappointing for those that did put him as a C. He was the number one ta uh, captain option this week. Besides that, we saw Zorko with an 85, disappointing in an easier matchup. And besides that, we saw a reveal who was the sub. So hopefully you weren't relying on him as as uh, your scoring option, because that would have definitely hurt. But yeah, that sort of does it for the games. To quickly summarize, who I think are great trade-out targets. So this week, I think still targeting... Um, so you're still trading out any players that you didn't get off last week. So we're talking, talking, talking. We're talking about Took Miller. If you had him last week and you couldn't trade him out because all the other carnage, you're jumping off him. A Sexton, if you held him, he probably needs to go in unless he plays this week, which I don't think he will. Um, even a Fisher, if he isn't named, you can probably jump off him as well. And probably a Trelaw if he doesn't get up. So. Again, just fixing up your those leftover guys that you didn't go off last week. Number two, I have rookies. I still think it's highly important to finish your team if your team's in a very situation like mine. Um, you really want to jump off those rookies the best you can and complete your team. So that's what I'll hopefully be doing this week. Um, I think there's plenty of cheap options that you can jump to from a lot of these rookies that are starting to get a bit more pricey now. I've got a couple 400, so they are building cash. Um, very nicely. I don't mind if you jump off these guys a bit earlier, like a probably a Dowling, break into 25. Could I do want to see him this week, so I, I wouldn't probably recommend jumping off him now, but um, yeah, if it gets you to that next guy up, then I don't mind it. Um, I also have Powell and the Olivers, so those really low tier guys that you're uh, in your team that need to probably go. Um, yeah, like a power, like an Oliver. I struggle to really think of anyone else you, you'd have probably floating around in your team. Besides that, then you start to look a bit more luxurious with, you know, trading out those Frio guys. So you've got your, your Ryan, you've got your Young, and you've got your Sarong. I'd highly look at ju jumping off, even though they do have a decent run. The game style just isn't there. Even in the games that they have scored well in, they uh, should have scored well and they haven't. So um, maybe it's time to jump off. And if your team is perfect, then you've got all your players are in form and, um, yeah, there's no concerns. And you're probably just jumping off players that are going to cop a bit of tag. So, like I said, uh, a Nick Dacos is probably one that you could jump off with who's going to cop a bit of attention for the remainder of the season and has a tougher matchup coming. Um, Bontempelli, probably one I probably wouldn't look at because he has probably got a tag coming him this way this week with a blitz hours, but he went 149 against the cats last early in the year so i probably wouldn't recommend that one then he has the swans after that so a tougher matchup it's really really splitting the hairs from here on out if you're in that position where your team is perfect and which i don't think any team is perfect i think you probably all have these midfielders that aren't scoring the best so that's a couple of trade out targets. Some trade in targets. I probably should bring up the page actually as a bit of a preview for what I'll talk about in the next video on Thursday. Um, Philippu is a highly tradable target, I think, this week. Um, very cheap. Should be very easy to switch it from a rookie. So, no matter what situation you're in, he is a great target. Um, again, good matchup, good run coming. So, ticking all the boxes there. Um, I got the Port Boys on here in the next slot, just given their run for the remainder of the season. I really like it. Good matchup this week. Just matter who's going to cop the tag. So maybe don't trade into a Butters just because I think um, he will cop the attention this week. So, But both are fairly cheap, or especially Rosie's cheap. Um, Simpkins also another one I'm hugely for trading in if you're looking for a forward. Um, he, again, has a great run to come, showing some great f form, 
great role as well. So again, ticking all the boxes. So I'd highly recommend him. Still as a cheaper mid a midfielder, if you're not keen on the Port Boys, um, again best run for the remainder of the season in terms of midfield runs. So get him on there. And finally, if you're looking for a defender, you can go either a Stewart or you can go a Rivers. I'd probably go a Stewart over a Rivers, but um, I don't mind either way. Honestly, both are very similar price. It's sort of splitting hairs about do you think Stewart will come with attention or do you think um, Rivers' role is going to change at any time, any point in time. And really, what we're doing for the rookies are really just probably going Zach Taylor is probably the only one I'm really looking at. Um, off, off that big score should get more game time now for the remainder of the season low price of 206k 16k sorry um not really looking to pay up for the likes of zane trullo or whatever you want to say his name is this time of year you really just want to maximize your cash and go to basement i think i think most of us have pretty decent benches now that we've only got six weeks remaining so if we're looking just a general rule of thumb if you want to trade out one of these rookies for the remainder of the season then you're pretty much set for the remainder of the season i wouldn't worry too much about getting more of these cash generated rookies in you can probably even look at getting some looping options for the remainder of the season in so something to consider well i have logan evans or or sean maker um ever uh, humphreys dowling and a felstrop that's five rookies that are generating cash at the moment that i'll probably look to trade out over the next five weeks so um yeah, I probably want to want probably one more cash generating rookie in my team before I start to just put some, put some dead wood on my bench and start to loop for the remainder of the season. So something to consider there. Um, but we'll quickly just finish off with what my trade targets are going to be this week. So a bit of a tough one um this week for me because again my only my only luxury moves I guess I can make is maybe jumping off a of Luke Ryan early. I think he's my biggest problem. Followed by Young and Sarong. I don't. I'm not really too concerned with the likes of you know all these guys. I think they can all go pretty well in the top um, defenders. I did speak about Nick Dacos maybe copying a bit of tension for the remainder of the season, but again, I still think he is close enough to top six for the remainder of the season. These five, I'm pretty happy with. I just really want a nice f6 but i'm gonna look at dowling first on the friday night if he can pop a sort of 70 then i take that and then i probably do a few pardon me a few more luxury position uh luxury trades like trading out o'brien but we'll have to wait and see but at this point in time i think i'm looking at jumping off a mccray who is no longer playing and i think i was doing like a i think it was a pink I think it was pink. I, don't, I can't fully really remember, but I was going through a Filippo. And that only left me with 212k, which isn't quite enough to get to Zach Taylor. So, um, why is it eyes in the midfielder? That's right. So maybe I'll, I'll shuffle my trades around a little bit to probably to make that 4k and make that work. For the remainder of the season, but that's sort of what I'll look look to be doing. Maybe I won't jump off pink. I'll jump off, you know, one of the other rookies that has generated a bit more cash. Like a, I could jump off a, a Garcia, but then that's my looping option gone. So it was something I'll have to weigh up to see what's going on. So that's this is something I'm looking at, and Philippu will be in my F6 for the remainder of the season. But um, like I said, if the likes of Dallin goes well, then maybe I'll give uh, Philippu a miss, and I'll probably try and target a few more points in the back line. Get rid, get off a. Uh, a Ryan who is putting up some very stinky store scores. Alrighty, well that was sort of do it for today. I think I've covered everything that we need to talk about. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. Please give this video a like and subscribe. And yeah, I will catch you guys all in the next video. Bye.